Coming up on this edition of G Week. We take you on a march for unity and check out how scraps of material can be made into some amazing art. Plus, we're way too good at goodbyes this month at GW. Which student association senator has been removed? And how do students feel about a prominent GW administrator leaving campus? We'll let you know. All this and more on G Week. Hello, welcome to the latest edition of G-Week. I'm Jillian Horn. And I'm Alex Snyder. Let's begin with the latest headlines. Earlier this month, the GW Student Association unanimously approved bills aimed at reforming future student body elections. One of the new bills renames the JEC to the Joint Election Commission and increases the number of members from five to seven. The JEC will be led by a commissioner, the student body elects, which is a departure from the old appointed position. The bills also change how the commission will handle campaign violations after a series of stalking and harassment complaints rocked last spring's essay presidential election. Student Association Senator Joe Vogel was removed from his position by the SA Senate late last month. SA Executive Vice President Sidney Nelson suspended Vogel in early November after the senator missed four consecutive SA meetings. Vogel was participating in the Ralph Northam 2017 gubernatorial campaign in Virginia. The SA Senate did not approve his reinstatement on November 20th after questioning Vogel about his absences. His seat as a senator at large will likely remain vacant. Fraternity Tau Kappa Epsilon will return to campus in the spring, three years after having its charter revoked. The GW chapter had been suspended in 2014 following a marijuana arrest, and a deeper investigation resulted in the charter being suspended. The fraternity known as Teak will welcome 30 new members. It will be required to disclose its disciplinary past to prospective brothers during the rush process. Coming up, the face of the GW administration is leaving after years on the job. We'll tell you why and how students feel about it after the break. Raise high. This isn't just our battle cry. It's our call, our challenge. Because when you were called to Washington, you were called to higher expectations, to a higher standard. We are called here to advance knowledge, to serve society, to change the world. This is the George Washington University, and what we make is history. So stand up, be bold, take risks, press on, push harder, raise high. Welcome back. On November 28th, GW announced that the Vice Provost and Dean of Students, Peter Konwerski, would be stepping down after more than 25 years of working at the university. Reporter Michael Schnell has student reactions to the news. Michael? This is Michael Schnell reporting from Kogan Plaza. Let's see what GW students have to say about Peter Kay leaving the university. Honestly, given how poorly he handled the whole situation with the GW Protects Rapist campaign, I'm kind of glad that he's leaving, so I think it'll be better for GW students. But he's a funny guy, and I like his Twitter stream, so kind of heartbreaking. Kind of sucks. Um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure who he was. I know that he's a, a popular target of memes. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think we need a new provost for students, and I think we need new representative in, a new representative in the Title IX office. I'm kind of sad to see him go. You know, it's not really something that I think is going to affect me personally too much, though. So I'm ready to see what new changes in, in an administration there will be and uh, hopefully we'll just see GW become a better place no matter what because that's what everyone wants at the end of the day. As you can see after speaking to several students there are mixed opinions about Peter Kay's big departure. Some are happy about it, some are upset, some are indifferent and some are just concerned with the memes. Reporting from Kogan Plaza, I'm Michael Schnell for G Week. Thanks Michael. Peter Kay, the best of luck to you from our team here at GWTV. The Museum of the Bible opened in the district on November 17th. The 430,000 square foot building has eight floors, a grand ballroom, a restaurant, and a biblical garden. 
Exhibits include the history of the Bible, Vatican museums, Christmas Illuminated, and the Hebrew Bible. Tickets are available now on the museum's website. Hey Jillian, have you noticed all these new bikes around campus recently? I have, they've been literally everywhere. Interesting you should mention that. Our reporter Talia Pfeffer went to a town hall where Foggy Bottom residents voiced their opinions about these dockless bikes. The Advisory Neighborhood Commissions for Foggy Bottom, West End, DuPont, and Georgetown held a joint town hall on Tuesday about the dockless bike share demonstration program currently in effect. Ultimately, bike share is about a transit option for people using bikes um, and trying to make that uh, more broadly accessible to people across the district. Representatives from five of the bike sharing companies, MoBike, LimeBike, Jump, Spin, and Ofo were in attendance. The town hall is being held in response to complaints about the bikes being parked in inconvenient places. From a business perspective, this is really bad for us. Uh, this is blocking our entrances, this is creating a problem for us. If I see a bike that's out of place, if there's an issue, I should be able to look at the bike and call 311. Proponents of the program hope it will boost the amount of bikers and take some pressure off of the city's other transportation options. And, uh, the doctor's system has really opened the door for people who typically don't bike, don't have access to, uh, to uh, capital bike share, don't have access to bike. It gives them an opportunity to ride. Reporting for G-Week, I'm Talia Pfeffer. Coming up after the break, Follow us as we go to the epicenter of last month's Unity March. Don't go anywhere. I'm staying right here. Welcome back. There is a new exhibit you should check out at the Textile Museum. The Box Project, Uncommon Threads and Scraps, Fashion, Textiles, and Creative Reuse are the two exhibits currently on display at the GW Textile Museum. These two projects are both made up of unique and creative pieces of art. Not wasting any time, the GW Textile Museum kicked off the 2017 school year with two particularly interesting exhibits. The Box Project on Common Threads was an enterprise led by collector and former textile museum trustee Lloyd Costin. Costin challenged 36 top fiber artists with the task of constructing a three-dimensional work of art that was small enough to fit in a box, hence the name of the exhibit. The artists that took part in this project came from all over the world, each displaying tidbits of their customs and culture. Also on display at the museum is the scraps Fashion, Textiles, and Creative Reuse Exhibit. This project brings together the work of three acclaimed designers from Milan, Los Angeles, and Tokyo. The theme of this exhibit is taking scraps and waste products and instead of throwing them out, recycling them to create elaborate and exquisite works of art. Be sure to visit the Textile Museum before these impressive exhibits are gone. The Box Project on Common Threads will be running through January 29th, and scraps, fashion, textiles, and creative reuse will be on display until January 9th. For G Week, I'm Michael Schnell. Almost three months have passed since Hurricane Maria devastated Puerto Rico, yet many are still without sustainable power or water. Puerto Rican Americans and allies across the country are demanding governmental aid. On November 19th, hundreds gathered on the National Mall for a unity march for Puerto Rico. The protesters started at the Capitol and marched to the Lincoln Memorial in solidarity with the victims of Hurricane Maria, demanded the repeal of restrictive economic legislation, and called for greater recognition of Puerto Ricans as American citizens. Speakers included march organizers, government officials, and Puerto Rican celebrities such as Lin-Manuel Miranda and Rita Moreno. The march served as an important opportunity for Puerto Rican voices to be heard in our nation's capital. 
On the anniversary of the 2016 presidential election, GW students took to the streets to demand a renewed DACA program. We sent G-Week reporter James Pajusis to follow the rally as it made its way through the district. James? Undocumented and unafraid, chant the group of students behind me. These students have assembled from schools all across the district and Maryland, Virginia area to march towards the Capitol building today to show their solidarity for immigrant and undocumented youth. I believe that we, I believe that we will win. While most of campus was just waking up, these students were already riled up. The time is 9.30 a.m. on the anniversary of Donald Trump's election. In Kogan Plaza, students assembled to express their concerns over the pending termination of the DACA program. Right here. Right here. Right now. Right now. Right now. Thank you. It wasn't long before students from the School Without Walls joined the rally in Kogan, sporting large signs and banners. Then, the supergroup makes their way to Union Station. From there, they plan on meeting up with other students from the DMV where they will march to show their solidarity with undocumented immigrants. Now on Capitol Hill, the rally congregates once more before heading into the Senate office building. I'm an undocumented, unafraid, and unashamed! Protesters filed in quietly, raising a defiant fist in the air, but the silence didn't last long. a demonstration in the Senate office building, the students behind me assembled in the Senate park where they will conclude their protest. They have promised to not stop fighting until Congress passes the Clean Dream Act before the end of this year. I'm James Pagnesis on Capitol Hill from June. Thanks, James. Well, that brings us to the end of this edition of G-Week. Until next time, make sure to check out GWTV on our website at www gw-tv.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll be seeing you around campus.